Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Enjoying the weather? Yes. Yes, it's wonderful. Me too. I call this meeting of Lake Mary Toastmasters Club 6440 to order. Before we proceed with the meeting, please silence your cell phones. I would like to ask everyone to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Our club mission is to provide a supportive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And with that said, please help me welcome the Toastmaster this morning, Paul Wall. Before we get too far along here, there seems to be an agenda change. <laughs> Nicole is not here, so we will be going straight to speaker two in a second. And that leaves Martin open for table topics. Oh yeah, yeah. which is actually good because we have two extra long speeches today. The theme for the day is New Orleans which you might have thought the theme would be Veterans Day, yeah. and I'm very appreciative of the veterans and the, uh, the military and all they do for us. <laughs> but I wanted to exercise my right to pick any <laughs> And one of the things I like about Toastmasters is the variety of topics we get to discuss and I happen to be going to New Orleans straight from here, get to one to the airport and was not really gonna come today, but since I was Toastmaster I said <laughs> I guess I and nobody was looking for me to say no, I'm not coming, so I'm like, okay, I guess I can make it. So I decided to share look up some facts about New Orleans. I've been there a few times in college. One of the things is that it's not for pronounced New Orleans, it's New Orleans, <laughs> which I didn't know that. Also, one of the main things I'm excited about is the food. And when you look up the facts, the, the Creole, Creole food, but also the beignets, I'm going to try to grab some tomorrow morning. But I'll, I'll keep giving some facts that I looked up, but let's go through our technical table here this morning, starting with our grammarian, Julia Coffin. and guests, my role as the grammarian is to provide the word of the day. The, day is, the word of the day today <coughs> is Jubilee, and Jubilee is about celebrating an anniversary. So in 2024, Toastmasters will celebrate its 100th Jubilee. What will you be doing in 2024? Also as my role, I will be listening for proper uses of language and things that I like to, that I hear and things that could use some uh, massaging. So I'll give my report at the end of the day. Thank you. Okay, next we will go to our awe counter, Adi Mazir. my um, uh, function <laughs> to listen for the use of filler words such as ah, uh, you know, so, okay, and, and other audible pauses as fillers. I'll be noting if members perform any double clutches, which means to say things twice, such as this means, this means. Finally, I'll also include things which might be distracting, such as lip, snaps, lip smacks. <laughs> I'll present my report during the evaluation portion of the meeting. And last, we'll go to our time.
Oppenheimer, Suzanne Michelle. Good morning, um, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My function is to time the speakers, evaluators, and table topic participants to ensure they meet the timing requirements. I will demonstrate the timing lights, which will be displayed as, well, as follows. Speakers, five minutes will be the green card. Um, six minutes will be the yellow, and seven minutes, seven. And the table topics, you have 30 seconds, um, and I will post the green card. Um, 45 seconds, and then one minute. And the evaluators will have two minutes. I will post the green card, yellow two and a half, and red three. At the end of each segment, I will report the <coughs> results. <Thank you. coughs> New Orleans is known as the Crescent City, apparently, and I would have thought it was because of the way it, it borders the Gulf of Mexico, but apparently, those shows my geography, but it's the Lake Pontchartrain that it borders, and uh, so that was interesting to me to realize that it's not right there on the Gulf. So I think we'll go straight into our second speaker on the agenda. Diane Manikowski is going to give a speech on folk tales have long been used to pass down traditional beliefs and cultural values. The themes that make up the essence of the tales often deal with opposites and resonate as core beliefs across cultures. Today's folk tale based on the book, The Five Chinese Brothers, weaves in themes of good versus evil, wise versus foolish, and fairness versus unfairness, along with the constant theme of using our unique techniques in the service of others. Confucius might have summed the story up something like this. Talents used wisely between brothers can overcome much. Please welcome competent communicator Diane Manikowski as she presents this classic tale. Good there was a very poor little village near the sea in China. It lay on the outskirts of a huge wall that surrounded the luxurious palace of the emperor. Now the people didn't see the emperor very much except for times of jubilee. However, he extracted great taxes from his people. They, were, they had to work very hard to just stay alive. They were hungry, they were frustrated, and they were easily led to anger. Now, in a tiny, thatched, mud brick hut at the edge of the village lived a family of five Chinese, honorable Chinese brothers and their elderly mother. They, their father had died and left them owing a great debt to the emperor. So they had to work double time and work very hard to, just to pay this back little by little. In addition, they had to do everything they could to survive and take care of their mother who they treated with reverence and respect. Now these five Chinese brothers were tall and very thin, and they had large almond eyes and little tiny lips that turned up in a smile wherever they went. They walked alike, they talked alike. In fact, they looked so much alike that no one could tell the difference between them except when they stood together. However, they did have some remarkable differences among them. Each had a unique and exceptional gift that was unique to each of them. The first could swallow the sea. He would go down to the sea, collect his rare and beautiful fish, bring them to market, and bring them back and sell them. The second had an iron neck. Now, they didn't have any oxen, so he would harness, put the harness around his neck, pull the plow through the fields, and cultivate it before he planted his crops. The third Chinese brother could stretch and stretch and stretch his legs. He would, at the end of the evening, after the palace gardeners had finished picking the luscious red, red fruit from the very tall lychee trees, 
he would creep over the fence and stretch way up to the topmost branches and pick the fruit with the milk white flesh that would have gone to waste had he not done that. Then he would sell it to the rich merchants in the town because it was considered a delicacy of the imperial palace. The fourth Chinese brother could not be burned. He would build the fires that would dry out the rice and the grains and the tea and the tofu, and he would tend the vats that produced the rice wine. The fifth Chinese brother could hold his breath indefinitely. Now he would go down to the still estuaries on the banks of the Yangtze River, and he would dive in and plant his precious rice seedlings in the fertile muck. One day after the first Chinese brother had finished selling his fish at the market and he was ready to go home, a little boy asked him, can I go fishing with you? And he said, oh no, this cannot be done. But the little boy jumped up and down and he begged and he pleaded and he said, please, please take me. So the first Chinese brother finally conceded, but with one condition. You must promise that you will obey me promptly. The little boy said, yes, yes, I promise. But the little boy was a naughty little boy, and he had no intention of keeping a promise. The early the next morning, the first Chinese brother and the little boy went down to the sea. The first Chinese brother reminded the boy, now remember, you must obey me promptly. When I signal you to come back into shore, you need to come immediately. Oh, yes, 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 I promise, as he crossed his fingers behind his back. So the first Chinese brother bent down and he sucked and sucked and swallowed the sea and exposed all the treasures that lay beneath it. The little boy was amazed and he went running all around and he's picking up beautiful shells and marbles and stuffing them into his pockets. While the first Chinese brother is at the shore and he's collecting his fish, when he's finished, he waves to the little boy and beckons him to come in. But the little boy saw him, but he didn't, he didn't listen. He decided he was going to keep doing what he wanted to do. The first Chinese brother motioned with his arms, urgently calling him in, for he couldn't hold the sea very much longer. The, first, the little boy got really disrespectful, and he made faces and laughed, and he ran farther and farther into the seabed. Then the first Chinese brother thought he was going to burst. He couldn't hold the sea any longer. Finally, the sea forced its way out of his mouth, returned to its home, and the little boy disappeared below the surface of the water. Now, when the first Chinese brother returned to the village alone, the villagers became really angry. They arrested him, threw him in prison, they tried and convicted him, and the judge sentenced him to have his head cut off. Now, on the morning of the execution, the first, the, the first Chinese brother bowed respectfully to the judge and said, Your Honorable Judge, will you kindly allow me to go home and bid my elderly mother goodbye? The judge said, It is just. So the first Chinese brother went home and he told his family that he was to be beheaded that morning. The second Chinese brother said, I have an iron neck. Surely the sword will not hurt me. I will return in your place. Don't worry. So the second Chinese brother returned to the village to be beheaded, and no one noticed that he had switched places because they looked so similar. When he got there, the executioner took his mighty sword, struck a mighty blow, whack! But nothing happened. No head fell. There wasn't even a drop of blood anywhere. The crowd was perplexed, and they became incensed, and they said, we need to drown him. On the morning of the execution, the second Chinese brother bowed reverently to the judge and said, Honorable judge, will you kindly allow me to go and bid my elderly mother goodbye? The judge said, it is just. So he went home and he told his family that he was to be thrown into the sea and drowned that morning. Now, the third Chinese brother said, they couldn't drown me. I could stretch my legs so far that my head would never go below the, the surface of the water. So he said, I will, re I will go in your place, honorable brother. Do not worry. So the third Chinese brother strolled down to the village 
where the people had gathered at the seabed to watch the drowning. They threw him in a boat, they rowed him far into the middle of the sea, and they threw him overboard. His legs grew and grew and grew until he touched the very bottom of the seabed. And all the crowd could see was his smiling face bobbing <laughs> on the top of the crest of the waves. Now they became incensed. And they screamed, we need to burn him, burn him. And the judge agreed. So the, the third Chinese brother asked the judge on the morning of the execution, can I please go home and bid my mother goodbye? The judge agreed, and he left and went home. He told his family that he was to be burned at the stake the next morning. The fourth Chinese brother said, no one can burn me. In fact, I'm feeling rather cold these days. It would surely be a, a, a nice change for me. I will go in your place. Don't worry. So he went into the town, again unno unnoticeable to all. When he arrived, a mass had gathered at the village square, and there was a huge stake that had been pounded into the ground, and it was surrounded by wood and kindling. The executioner tied him tightly to the stake and lit the fire. And in the midst of the flames, the people could hear a small voice. Oh, this is quite pleasant. <laughs> then the people became more and more incensed, and they screamed, bring more wood, bring more wood. And as the mighty fire roared and roared to great heights, they still heard another little voice that said, oh, this is quite comfortable indeed now. Thank you. So the people became murderous, and they said, you've got to smother him. And the judge agreed. On the morning of the execution, again, the fourth Chinese brother asked if he could go and bid farewell to his mother. And the judge agreed. He went home, and the fifth Chinese brother said, I cannot be smothered. I can hold my breath for as long as anybody needs me to. I will go in your place. Do not fear. So he went and arrived at the village where the, the mass had congregated. This time, they were prepared. There was a huge mud brick oven built in the center of the square, and it had been stuffed with whipped cream. And the villagers said, I am not, we're not going to let the, anything happen here. We're not going to be tricked again. They had brought their mats and their blankets, and they were ready to watch all night long and even into the wee hours of the morning to make sure that this guy was going to die. Surely he's going to die. They shoveled the first Chinese brother into the oven, and they slammed the door, and they barred it. And they sat, and they waited, and they waited, and they waited until suddenly the sun peeked up over the horizon. And then they opened the door, and the fifth Chinese brother jumped out, and he shook his body, and got all the cream off his body, and he stretched, and he yawned a great yawn, and declared, my, that was a wonderful night's nice rest. <laughs> now, the stupefied crowd stared with mouths agape and eyes wide, and the judge, trying to assuage any anger that might occur, stepped in front and said, we have tried to kill him in many ways, and it cannot be done. The heavens must have decided that he is innocent because they have saved him over and over from certain death. So the, the judge got the crowd to agree that he must be innocent, and they let him go home. The fifth Chinese brother walked home, and when he arrived, the mother gathered all the brothers together, and she said, you are all most honorable sons. Your father would be much proud. You have shown obedience and respect to your elders, love and loyalty to your family. And you, you, you have used your wisdom, your perseverance, and your unique talents in service of others and to overcome a great injustice. You deserve respect. And the five Chinese brothers and their elderly mother lived many years together and were very happy indeed. Master Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Can we have one?
one minute for evaluation. <coughs> Along with the beignets, I'm also looking forward to the shrimp oyster po'boys. <laughs> and one note on here, which I've definitely experienced, is how alcohol is practically given away there. Instead of collecting the cups, on making you throw them away on the way out, they give you a to-go cup when you have a drink. And while I'm glad not to live around that, I don't mind visiting it occasionally. And it's a great place for any jubilee. Our next speaker, Alexandra, is going to be given a five to seven minute speech and then after there will be a two to three minute question and answer session. Are you running yourself crazy just trying to live up with holiday tradition? Alexandra is going to share with us three survival techniques for the holiday season. Please welcome Alexandra. American Psychological Association, stress is on the rise in America by 69% during the holiday season. 69%. What is causing stress to Americans during the holiday season? <laughs> I have no time. Stress number one. <laughs> I have no money. Oh, I was invited to a Christmas party. I need to get the perfect gift. Stress number three, the pressure of always giving the perfect gift. Now you may wonder, what is the stress? Stress is tension, worry, and all these symptoms cause and are causing to Americans suffering from heart attacks, panic attacks, anxiety, and including death worry no more. Today I'm going to share with you three techniques that are going to help you to enjoy the holiday season, which by the way should be a jubilee season. Let's go with the fact number one. The fact number one was lack of time. I have no time. I'm working, I'm running with the kids, I have to go shopping for this holiday. Worry no more. I remember going on the weekends to do my shopping. I'm assuming you do the same thing. Wrong, big mistake. I'm in the parking lot waiting for my space. Let me tell you, people get really possessed during the holiday season. This lady caught me out, took my space, didn't even look at me. She, she took my space. She was with this big, rude attitude. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone. You experience these type of behaviors 
during the holiday season. Solution, shop online. <laughs> who is or he is or who has used before eBay? Who has used Amazon.com? And did you know that your favorite stores, they have the online store? Let me tell you something. My daughter wanted this perfume that in retail store cost like $80. I found it on eBay for $25, new with tag. Woohoo! So I feel like a hero. <laughs> Do not think about it half time. Use technique number one shop online. What was the fact number two? I don't have money. Let me ask you something. How many are in your, how many members are in your family, Martin? Counting nephews and nieces and all the little ones that I buy for, probably 15. 15. <laughs> Steven, how many members are in your family? The five kids alone are plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Do the math. If you go with the minimum amount of a gift, twenty dollars gift, do the math. Solution if you are lacking money because you don't have to go broke during this holiday season. You don't have to get a loan in the bank to buy gifts. Stick to a budget. My family, we have done many years. Reinvent yourself, by the way. Try new different traditions every year. I remember one year we tried the Chinese gift exchange. I don't know if you played that before. You buy one gift, and everybody put it in the middle, and then by take a number, and everybody start taking each other's gift. Think about it. It's fun. It's a new tradition, and you are not going to go broke. Lack of money, solution, stick to a budget. The third one was the perfect gift. Who had been there? Who has to always give the perfect gift? And then you go shopping, I'm going shopping for Julia. Mm, I don't know if Julia likes red or blue. Mm, Martin, I don't know if Martin's size. Uh, Ernst, I don't know if, she, if he drinks wine or whiskey. It's, it's crazy, it is crazy. You will never find the perfect gift. Solution. Gift certificates. <laughs> who doesn't have gifts? Who doesn't like gift certificates? Raise your hand. I know. <laughs> Very good. You are like my mom, and I'm going to tell you. No, 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 no. no. It's, it is perfect. Carrie, my mom said. You have no imagination. This course that's boring. <laughs> you didn't put any thoughts about it, Mom. That is not true. If I'm buying an American Express or a Visa car, obviously I didn't put any thoughts. But who use gas? Who go grocery shopping? Who doesn't like massages? Those are ideas. Those are ideas for gift cards. And you will get always the perfect gift. To recap, is no reason for you to say, I have no money, I have no time, I have no idea about giving the perfect gift. Stay with me, my techniques, one more time. You have, you have no time, what do you do? Shop online. If you don't have any money, you need to do what? Stay to a budget. And if you have the pressure for always getting the perfect gift, what do you do? Yes. Fellow Toastmasters, the holiday should be about jubilee. It should be having a good time. It shouldn't be about having heart attacks. So what? <laughs> if your house doesn't have the perfect light decorations, so what? If you don't give the perfect gift, say with me, so what? I really hope my techniques help you this morning to survive and enjoy the holiday season. These are <laughs>
are you going to deal with everyone else who's stressed? Which is uh, like you think everybody should have uh, like a different stress? Uh, you're out there shopping and you come across somebody who's you don't know, very stressed, and is making things difficult for you. That's a very good question. I used to be very high attitude in the past, but a few years ago, I'm trying to take it easy. I don't know if you heard the, the, the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Go with the flow. If Ernst doesn't like the bottle of whiskey I gave him, you know, re it. <laughs> <laughs> wrong with being considered considered the least creative person in your family after years of giving gift cards? Is there anything wrong with that? According to my mom and Carrie, it is. <laughs> I'm joking, Carrie. I'm still going to be there. <laughs> it, it, it's, that's a very good question. My approach has been, I, I get about the gift cards having that wrong aura, but uh, Hey, I mean, it, it's a, it's a lot of, it, it is a lot of thoughts you can put by buying gift certificates. There's so many places that you can go and then give the ability to that person that you're giving the gift to, to pick something that they like, that they really, really like. How would you feel if you buy those red socks to give to your mother and she never wore them and you find out that she re gave them? So I, I think this is a better approach. What do you think about kids making gifts for their uh, for their parents and grandparents, and also you making gifts for other people? Stephanie, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Diane, that's an amazing that's an amazing idea. And you may have the spaces if you don't have little ones, but I always tell my kids when they ask me for different occasions, holidays, Mother's Day, oh, what do you want me to you know to give you? And I said, well, just your happiness, you know, typical mom. But they give me drawings, or they give me stuff that they make, and they are special. And they, I say that they, they're really special for me. <laughs> That's a good idea, Diane. I don't know how we are with time. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. Surprising but interesting fact about New Orleans is that it's where voodoo came into the country. In the 1800s, voodoo queens became the central figures in culture in New Orleans. Marie Laveau gained prominence performing exorcisms and she overthrew other queens in the city. Interesting fact is that her cemetery warrants more visits than Elvis in Tennessee. Now, We'll move on to the table topics portion of the meeting, which Jessica Reshke. <laughs>
back after a couple weeks away. My favorite accent across the country is those from the uh, Midwest because it's so bland. <laughs> you don't have the Northeast accent, which you can tell right away, or the Southern accent. You can pretty much tell when someone's from the Midwest because it's just normal and bland <laughs> and uh, perfect. Really nice to hear. <laughs> New Orleans is, of course, known for Mardi Gras, the one big jubilee they have here. People I know who've lived there say that they usually just evacuate the city, they leave, sometimes they run their house out, the people they know, or they just go on vacation for that week because they don't want to deal with it. Which I think it's a shame. I might want to experience it if I lived there. If you lived in New Orleans, would you stay for the party or would you leave? Very hard. Yes. I would definitely stay. <laughs> I would definitely stay. I have uh, the maid of honor for my wedding who lives in New Orleans and she stays and she takes her son and they do it's entirely different if you're somebody that lives there versus, it versus somebody that comes in because the people that are coming in are coming into party they know like my friend Jen she knows all of the the best floats the ones that throw the best things off the float but be it like some some are shoes some are purses some are not just beads things like that so I would say, I would say of various parts of the United States. And uh, myself, I can't remember, but I thought that the best purchase someone made and the president made uh, in the United States was the purchase of Alaska. Because uh, they paid, pardon? They, they bought it uh, uh, for $86 million or whatever, and uh, of course it turned out to be the biggest. Uh, stayed with the most amount of oil in pocket. As far as I'm concerned, I bought myself a uh, nice car about 10 years ago, eight years ago. It was a Lexus, which has never failed me, and it was the best purchase I ever made. I think I've got time for one more. Uh, Jen, you have Paul touched on this earlier, but New Orleans is really associated with food being the birthplace of voodoo here in the United States and haunting and magic occurrences. Do you believe in the supernatural? Gus. Actually, during one of our visits to New Orleans with my daughters, this lady wanted to read my palm. And I said, well, what are you going to tell me? And I said, I have a question for you. My question is, can you tell where I'm from? And she couldn't. So I didn't believe in giving her five dollars to read my palm. Because there are many ways I can be able to find the truth and the future. And I tell you how to Thank <laughs> you. 
do with that. <laughs> <laughs> the educational portion. You ready for that? Yeah. I'll let you hit them after, after your evaluation. This is the time that we find when we find out what we did well and what we could do better. And we're going to start with our evaluators today. We're going to do our speech evaluation. By the way, who paid attention to the general evaluator tips that came out? I'll know by the evaluations if you did or not and by the reports that I hear. Okay, so our first evaluator, evaluating Diane Manikowski's speech will be Mike Hughes. Come on down. Yes, it was an interesting story. I really enjoyed it. Definitely was entertaining, I can say that much. The techniques, wasn't really sure on which technique to use because I just had this to me five minutes ago and didn't have time to read it. So I underlined a few. I had time, so we'll take time. We'll take time. We'll take time. All right, no, great use of vocal variety. I really enjoyed that. Uh, what part's the most exciting? I think when the kid got drowned, sometimes you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seeing naughty children get drowned just makes me feel better. So, <clears throat> moving on from that, you believe. What was the idea of uh, the speed you're trying to convey? I was still unsure as to what you were trying to convey, but you were definitely very effective in telling the story. I thoroughly enjoyed the story. And were you able to visualize what was in mind? And yes, absolutely. Kind of started thinking of the old biblical, what was it? The, uh, uh, what was the, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> it was a Chinese story. Absolutely loved it. Thank you for that. And, uh, uh tell us <laughs> Next up is, uh, evaluate Stephen Morgan, evaluating Alexander Speech. stressful than holidays. Here is a speech about the holidays, but apparently it's finding a way to fit in the word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Madam General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters guests, particularly Alexandra hiding off in the wings. <laughs> the fact-finding report speech out of the Speaking to Inform Manual. A very interesting project to work with and you took an interesting tact with it. Excellent way in that you structured it and that you had your three points. Not only did you have your three points, you had three props, one for each one of them. Then you had your three placards, one for each one of them. That structure works out very well. I love the props. The props gave a very interesting way of looking at them between the antlers, the box, and your purse. The placards, I don't think, really added much to it. So you had is some of the words hand drawn on them. They really didn't tell us or enhance it in any particular way. You would have been perfectly fine without them and made all your points just as salient. The inclusion of the audience was very well done, aside from either asking questions of me and Martin in there, and then being able to adjust to Carrie's unexpected response, <laughs> and managing to squeeze that in very well. Now what I found interesting in putting this together in the way you did this speech is that the fact-finding report was, is more of the idea of providing information to a group so that then they have information to go and make a different decision. This was more of an advice column. And the advice was still very helpful and you were giving us great pieces of advice. But in terms of the fact finding part, I would have said, where's the research for the other parts or where's it coming from? What's the extra information and the decision we were trying to make? You still did great with this particular speech, but if you were to consider what the project was for, you could always find a way to do something else if you wanted to. But you get credit either way, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Q&A section is always the hardest part when you get to one of these is you don't know what's going to come out or as you already had pointed out when you got started, what if no questions come forward, what are you going to do? I have seen them before, someone will put out there seating the audience with questions that they can ask for you so that you're all set. <laughs> but you actually just waited for it, a few came up that you handled very well. The only part was knowing when we were going to finish to wrap those parts up. The best part of all of this was the way you put the humor into this. Your particular bit of humor between the props, the little quips, and then handling the peanut gallery out here. <laughs> because there were certainly plenty coming from them. <laughs> but you managed to handle it all very well with the don't worry, be happy, for sure. <laughs> and of course, the so what attitude, you're going to get through this speech one way or the other. <laughs> but of course, the best gift you can give is the gift of time, and you gave us the time that you put together for the speech, and you give up and present it to us, and for that, uh, thank you. And I certainly hope that by the time you'll get through this manual and the next for that ACV, that we'll be celebrating your jubilee as well. <laughs> Two different evaluators, two different perspectives, two different angles. Very yeah. effective. Thank you, Stephen. We'll just let him, because it is Veterans Day, we'll just let him have a hand. We'll just get a good hand on a free pass. It's a jubilee. Jubilation and jubilee for this man. We'll let him just ignore him. Okay. It is hard to evaluate a speech when you don't know the project. And for the evaluators, the Toastmasters that are filling out sheets, it would be helpful if we knew the manual and the objectives of the project. If it does not get put on the agenda, do mention it when they come up that they're doing this speech thing from this particular project. So we'll know what we're evaluating. Because it says, did we meet the objective? I don't know. Don't know what they were. So try to add that. And if that doesn't happen there, evaluators like Stephen did say what you're evaluating. You're evaluating speech number for so and so from the project and the objectives is and he did that very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Now I'm gonna hear my reports in one minute or less. So I'm going to hear from our timer, Susan. Question and answer time, Alexandra? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. No? Yeah. Well, you had three questions 25 seconds for the first one, 48 for the second one, and 33 for the last one. So her total time was what? All together. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll get that next time. <laughs> about, about nine minutes altogether. Okay. Yeah. Okay, is that what you anticipated? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good, okay. good. So you're within time. Okay. I'll count them. Adi, how much money did we make? Five cents per infraction, folks. <laughs> So, uh, Paul won pause over there. Uh, Ernst, six uhs and one um. Mike, four uhs. Carrie, one uh, one like and three double clutches. Uh, Steve, one uh. Julia, one um. Stephanie, I got one double clutch. Diane, two uhs, one pause. Martin, one double clutch, and Alex, two double clutches. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for our grammarian distinguished Toastmaster, Julia Kaufman. Yeah. All right, for the use of the word of the day, we had a great example done by Stephen. 
And we had a terrible example done by Mike. <laughs> by Diane, Paul, Alexandra, Jessica, and Stephanie, kind of, sort of stuff. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lip smack. For <laughs> use of grammar, I never catch improper use. Things that I did hear that I liked. I heard shrimp oyster poor boy from Paul, and give you a to-go cup for drinking. Love that, too. <laughs> Jessica, I came up more, with more on the fly, get hit in the head with a shoe. Carrie, I would stay, absolutely. Ernst, the best purchase of Alexis, it's never failed me. Gus, this lady wanted to read my palm. <laughs> Diane, overcome a great injustice. And Alexandra, how to survive the holidays. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. <laughs> that me, go away, Mike. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Jubilee. <laughs> quite a bit. Alexandra hiding off in the wing, the three placards, one for each point. In a correction, I, you said inclusion of the audience was very well done. Get rid of the very. Inclusion of the audience was well done. The more of an advice column. You get credit either way. <coughs> the best part was the way you added humor. That's my report. Thank, Thank you. you very much. catching at least one grammatical faux pas. And there were a couple, but it's hard. When people are telling stories, you get so engrossed in the stories. Okay, for my general evaluation, we're enjoying this new setup, right? Yes. It's different, it's nice. However, it's a little cramped back there and over there. So you can pull it forward a little bit and move it down just a slight bit because some of us don't have teeny little Susan type figures to get this. <laughs> so you're going to have to keep clapping. Okay. Nice theme. I was all set to be like, oh, wow, it's Veterans Day. That's the perfect theme. Today's November 11th. But you did a great job. And, and saying, I took the liberty as a Toastmaster, developed my own theme, because this is what I wanted to do, and still acknowledge the veterans. So kudos to you for that. Table topics, next. You absolutely nailed it. Not only were your questions thought provoking, but you selected people who had no other speaking roles. And that doesn't happen here too often lately. We kind of like double up and oh, we've got enough people and you were selective. You picked people who didn't have other speaking. So thank you. And that, I think that my role is time. I had a good time. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask our business chair, Stephen Morgan, VP of Education. Next week's meeting, as we have scheduled, we have speakers Adi and Stephanie. Yes. For next week, Toastmaster is Mike. What? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's put a call in there for the Thursday. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll check and see if you're wanting that one. Martin has table topics, you already checked there, and Jessica is general evaluator. The evaluators listed are Gus and Diane. Paul, you're not going to be here. Okay. Cool. Our counter is Juliana, Gramaria, and Nicole is listed there, and Timer Ernst. Good for those. Is there anyone who'd like the third evaluator spot or anyone jumping for the third speaker spot? Do I have a so, I think I never do you, Yeah, you're evaluator. Oh, okay. Evaluator. You're not evaluator? <laughs> you're a third evaluator? You're available. All right. Following week, take note the Toastmaster role will be open. We're still available there, but the speakers scheduled are Mike, Diane, and Gus. We would like to ask our guests what you thought of the meeting in particular, why you're here, and any other feedback, because we love to get feedback. In the meantime, our 50 50 guy is still looking for money. <laughs> <laughs> we have $5 to go to the Silver yeah, Jubilee. Yes. Behind you, behind you, behind you. Uh, 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 I'm going to be my real hero, real hero. Uh, 
this might touch it. Touch it. Yeah. It's Lamar, right? Yeah. That's right. What did you, if you want to donate it now? Wait, wait, wait. That's very encouraging. I like this clapping. <laughs> That's very, really good. I feel great. Uh, but I thought it was fantastic. Um, you guys, um, great speech, by the way. Um, I loved it. And uh, the reason I'm here is, of course, I want to be an engaging speaker. Um, I'll be teaching some classes in my church, and I want to make sure I get the attention of people, and I'm make sure I'm not boring, <laughs> um, pretty much. But yeah, I thought it was great. It will be definitely helpful. I love how you guys critique each other, but still encourage each other. Uh, I think it was fantastic. But uh, thank you. I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, as he said, it was very encouraging, but also, uh, but lots of room for improvement and people bringing up the points that were both encouraging, but also a bit more uh, critiquing educational. it. Educational. <laughs> uh, uh, the reason I'm here is I, I want to be a better public speaker. Uh, with my internship in human resources, I'm getting asked to speak in front of groups more often, and it's just something I need to improve on. And that's fine. Yeah. Probably what's going to happen is when I go up to do my speech, I'm just going to throw a 20 to him. <laughs> 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 you know, so um, I do have to work on my speaking. I work for New York Life, so it's one of those things where talking to people is going to be very important to me making a living. I felt that it was very educational. It was um, a point where I like the whole Jubilee thing. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. You know. I do recognize the Chinese, the five Chinese brothers story, so it was kind of interesting. Um, and I do like her prop, use of props and whatnot, so I feel that I could get a lot out of this group. Good. Cool. Lori. Right. Well, Many uh, years, I guess. Oh, I <laughs> Today's my last day of being a guest. <laughs> and I I really enjoyed this meeting. I too recognize the Chinese brother story. I'm from Hawaii, I'm Hawaiian, but people here mistake me for being Mexican Chinese. <laughs> I noticed there's like a Chinese thing going over there, a Chinese uh, Chinese gift exchange. I'm feeling quite at home here. <laughs> but I I I do enjoy these Toastmaster meetings, it makes me, it's encouraging, and I have a very stressful job, so I leave here in a good mood, and that's what I really do about it for school. Ready to draw? Okay, we have $27. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the change. Okay, I guess here you can do that. Oh, okay. Make a magic one. Can you explain? Glasses on? Okay, it's uh, 583 in the back. 583. Oh, you're not right. Oh, my God. The real, the real coup is if I can pull that off this weekend at the district conference, because that'll be several hundred, but wow. already done that twice, so I don't know. Twice. 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 We did have we did have our winner last week who redonated her winnings to our club. Oh, 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 just a suggestion, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he just donated fifty cents. He was supposed to get thirteen percent. <laughs> thirteen is fine. All right, well, that's a big, big deal. It is eight thirty. We shall leave on time. See you here next week. <laughs>